Hello. It's good to know today, guys. Going away this afternoon, so I'm a few days, a few nights away. So you probably are missing this bit, but when you play it back, you realise why I've started early. Ish. Okay. It's nearly far too. Right, today we're going to be painting in the style of a well-known artist. Not me, no, that's Cezanne actually. That's one we did quite a while ago now, 2013. Yeah, I think some of you may have done it with me. Don't know. Um, here's another image I do prefer, prefer is the still lights. Uh, lots of colour in them. I mean, with Cezanne, he was kind of on the verge of going into cubism. And um, a lot of his perspective is not actually spot on, but does it matter? That's what gives him this unique style, yeah? So when people come mad at you about being perfect, you just say, I'm not bothered, which is probably what he said. It's more about the colours, capturing the light and uh, painting in a kind of really impressionistic style, yeah? Moving on to kind of cubist techniques. Lost and found edges, anything like that. Colour of palette is we're going to be using very similar actually. Uh, mine's printed quite green in the background, but I think on the picture it's blue. But it doesn't matter really. So I'm using phyllo green, and we are using cadmium yellow or uh, process yellow, which is stronger. I've no cadmium red, but I've got a lizarine, uh, which I'm going to use uh, with some yellow. Should give me that warm colour. And then we've got uh, cerulean blue, quite a bit of this because it's in the background. And I've also got ultramarine blue because I'm going to use it for the darks. There's a lot of darks in here with ultramarine blue. But um, no underpainting on this. You could have put a, a kind of warm wash on if you wanted. I think in places that he's actually got some of this warmth. I might do that actually, but put some sienna on. So we put some sienna on and then draw the subject. Okay, so I just check if you're with me. Oh, uh, you're with the Woolwich. Uh, nobody there yet. Good, two, two, yeah. Anyway, thanks for joining me. There you go. <laughs> five to two now, so it should be here. Five to one. We come to class. Um, we should be there five minutes early. Anyway, that's another version, which I quite like. It's been varnished as well. That's in acrylic as well. Naturally, he used oils, yeah? Uh, so for speed, we're going to use acrylic. Now, I'm going to put, like I said, a nice burnt sienna wash all over the picture. And my painting is quite square, yeah? And this image is not square, yeah? It's slightly elongated. So I'm going to just elongate it by putting Dragging the base up to about here, yeah, and making it along a kind of uh, landscape, okay? Because I'm using lining paper, and it's not gesso, and it's just paper, because we're painting in uh, plastic, you're painting in, in um, paint, you know, acrylic paint. So you're actually covering the paper with plastic, yeah? and when it dries, you can paint over it, and put so on and so forth. So you don't really have to cover it with... Um, with, um, with gesso. Although if you do cover it with gesso, your colours are brighter because you've got a white, a pure white tone or uh, base underneath which sings out with the colour. But it's entirely up to you. We're, we're painting in the style of an oil painting technique because you're working from dark to light, yeah? which is easier with acrylics anyway. But if you want to do it in oils again, that's fine. Have a go on your own, yeah? Um, if you don't get, if you put any work on this weekend, uh, I don't usually work while I'm on holiday, but uh, to, to approve them, you know, I might not be doing it straight away, so don't worry. Don't keep sending it, sending it, sending it, because you end up with about four copies of your painting, and you have to delete three of them and put one on. Okay? So, um, take your time doing it. Post them, and if I see it while I'm away, I'll approve it, and then I can go on. Otherwise, I'll not be on my phone. All right? Well done. So, um, yeah, big brush, quite a bit of water, burnt sienna, it's going to be a lot of me uh, on the painting, yeah? And it's a lovely warm colour. I'm just going down to my tape, so that's my tape there, yeah, at the bottom. 
Um, you could actually do the sienna all around here. It will soak in and it could dry quite quick. Yeah. Again, like that. And if you wanted to use uh, a bit of kind of green at the top, I suppose, kind of cerulean, and where it blends, um, fellow green, sorry, and where it blends, that's going to go into, into uh, you see, so I've got some cerulean there as well, so, yeah, it's up to you, use your imagination. I don't know if he did it like this, I'm just kind of uh, playing about it, but sometimes, I think he did put warm, warm underpainting on, yeah? So some of it comes through in, uh, in the picture. And it also gives you a, a mid-tone value, okay? So that's my nice uh, underpainting. You can dry it off a little bit, so I get my hair dry out. Not talking. Me four minutes to put that on. Three minutes. You won't know I've got it on so fast. Some people that. Anyway, that's sort of thing. It's more or less dry, you see. So I hope it will take a little bit longer. Evaporate. I'm going to sketch it out now with a brush. You could use charcoal, but I want to keep it nice and clean. Okay? So a nice thin brush. And then uh, working quite quick today, like I said, because I'm going away. I'm going away for a couple of nights. But um, looking at the composition, you've got the back of the table, which is just above the horizon line, which is a straight line, something like that. Yeah. If you can't draw a straight line, God bless you. No, it doesn't really matter if it's not straight. It's just where the background wallpaper meets the wall. Okay? So we kind of start... You can start in a corner, do the shape, and if you look at these apples and objects, they're quite big in comparison yeah, to uh, the other objects. So if we start with the foreground apple, yeah, let's put a bit of a, you can tell it's an apple, are they? And then the shape here, and this goes into the bars. Now if you look at his, if you look at his, his, um, his ball, it's kind of not, uh, it's not straight, is it? You know? It's uh, it's kind of, it's lifted up at one side and it's uh, it's ting it's tipping too much at the back yeah so we've got that shape there uh, we can see more of this which is coming round yeah um, a bit more blue and red quite a bit water keep it uh, very loose and then the front of the ball is just coming from here uh, and across there I mean if you think about it composition wise you know it's like uh, especially with the glass next to it, it's like you shouldn't be seeing all that uh, so much of the glass at the top. I mean, you're seeing more at the top of the glass than you're seeing at the bottom. So, if your horizon line needs to be a straight line, and if that's the straight line of the ball, which is your horizon line, uh, you should be seeing less of that. So, you'd be a, 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 a smaller ellipse. But if we keep it like he did, yeah. We'll do it like he did, so we'll keep that kind of similar. And then we come down to uh, the base of the glass, and then where it disappears into, and you can just see the base of the glass there. So this is the side, you've got the width of the bowl as well, which comes out something like that, and it goes behind an apple. So if we do the apples and the lemons, and I think that's it, apples and lemons, all in one kind of go, we've got this lovely shape, which is quite big, and that, actually con catches the the lemon which again is quite big that's the front of it yeah like that. so this apple is going sitting the side of the napkin then it's going that way and then we have another apple in front of it which is quite big because that's nearer to you yeah keep the perspective going although it, some of his perspective was wrong others you know he got it right uh, so we got the shape of this apple as well, which is green. And then we've got a knife here, which is going off at this angle. Put the blade in and then, you know, if you want to put the handle in like that, which is that colour. Um, again, your drawing skills, 
nice and loose, keep it simple. Uh, that's the front of that apple as well. We can see where the shape of this napkin is going to be as it comes up like that. And the folds in it, nice folds, yeah. And that comes off the table anyway, yeah. Um, and then this edge, you've got the thickness of it, and then a fold there, uh, which is like that. And then this comes down, it goes that way, yeah. And that's the fold here. So, yeah, you're just getting all these little shapes. We can use a bit more blue, uh, a bit of red, just to give us purple tones, because that's a nice negative there, which is quite dark. Um, so yeah, it's dark in the glass as well, it's got that shape, it's dark around the rim. He's got it dark around the rim, so it's there, so that. We can just block these in. This is why we can paint so fast. Yeah, that's the back where the wallpaper is. These shapes, uh, it's actually the wallpaper that he's painted as well. Yeah, so there's big flowers in the wallpaper like that, and big leaf shapes. I think it is. Uh, it might have flowers and leaves behind it, but I think it's part of the paper because that shape and that shape marry up. So, yeah, so we've got the same pattern, a repeating pattern. Okay, so I've got my ultramarine blue, some more alizarine. Uh, we can carry on. We've got lots of grapes in here. Some of them you can see, others you can't. I've just got these shapes like that, and then they go in away from you. And then we've got. Um, I think it's either it's an orange, an apple, a tangerine, or whatever. This one comes out to the bowl, goes that way and casts a shadow. Yeah, like that. I will be using one big kind of flat brush when we get going. That's the other orange, and then we got this one coming all the way over to the edge of the bowl. Uh, there's something hanging over as well. Looks like it anyway. Uh, and there's something here as well, which is looks like the pattern of the background again. Uh, and the shape of the the glass uh, the vase or the glass yeah um and then we've got this really big red orange uh, apple which is at the side of this lovely blue you can see where the vase is and then it touches that and then it, it kind of comes round from there it doesn't go near the edge but comes down near enough to where the knife is and then we get this uh, Napkin coming off as well. All right, simple, isn't it? Yeah. So we can blend all that. <coughs> so the first thing I really need to do is block in some of these dark tones. So I've got my trusty flat nylon uh, herd brush. Yeah. I mean, you can't rub out once it's soaked in, so you have to kind of paint. So if I use some lovely lemon colour, yeah. Um, if you put white with uh, the, the yellow, it becomes opaque, so it covers up anything underneath. All right, we can have a little bit of green with that. So at the top of the lemon, we're getting that green tone. Okay, so that's a kind of really simple shape, but I want it to be strong color. Yeah, so I'm leaving that lovely lemon or yellow, coming yellow. It's not lemon. I mean, I don't, I, I don't possess a kind of lemon because I don't usually use it because I don't pay many lemon. But then again, anyway, I've got some alizarine crimson, uh, Bersiana, sorry, alizarine, and then we've got some of the kind of orangey colours. So again, we're using uh, more yellow with the um, the alizarine. Gives you these lighter oranges, let's see, like that. Uh, this one's going darker, but you can see the edge of it there, which is nice and light. Add more yellow, add a bit of white to it, you know. So the white mixed with the yellow becomes opaque, so you get a thicker colour. We've got a bit of a reflection there, and it goes quite dark. Then it goes green as well, you know, so you've got these kind of green shapes as well. I mean, we are painting in the style of, yeah? So whatever we did, we're going to emulate. Got this lovely green, I like using that word. Got this lovely green, which is a warm green, yeah. So it's a um, cadmium yellow or process yellow mixed with, um, mixed with some yellow, uh, some green, like that. And then we can add uh, a little bit more white to that to make it kind of opaque and, and lighter. So you've got this lovely highlight. 
single yellow and blue light. Yep. I mean, I don't know if he did the objects individually, like this, but uh, that's what we can do. Doesn't really matter. Just get a. I want to keep the colours really clean. We've got the same green there, um, and uh, as well. We've also got green in these uh, areas. So that green changes into um, most of the yellow and red, doesn't it? So you got this green and red making a nice dark colour anyway. So yeah, that's why you're seeing uh, this shape like that, uh, which is inside there. And then here we're seeing the darker shape on this one, like that. Uh, so that's just green and red mixed together. Then that, that disappears into this apple, which is just kind of peeking out from the background with the shadow of the other one behind it. Okay, uh, blocking dark tones, yeah. We've got a lovely blue there, so we can block it in. So I've got some cerulean blue. Like this, which is the lovely blue on this, uh, the bottom of the uh, the bar, uh, the glass, which is going to come out. There's a lot of this in the vase as well, and we can use some in the background. We've got the same kind of colour or tonal value. Think about the colours as tones, because if you look at where the rim, the water or the wine inside the glass hits the edge of the glass there, you've got a lovely light area and a little bit there as well <coughs> okay so we can get um, some more alizarin and cerulean blue to give us these uh, lovely kind of uh, shapes in the background can you see which are these nice uh, bluey greens not eerie green bluey green and then we can bring that down and do the dark bits i'm just going to finish off with the biggest apple and then i'll do the bulbs things because the biggest apple is um, got it's quite red, yeah. Uh, it goes right down to the other side. I'm just going to add some yellow to it like that. Quite thick paint, yeah. Like the paint, this is like oil painting technique. Uh, red, a bit of green, a bit of blue, sorry, with a red, and then from that we're going into the other side of the apple, where it's darker. Now if you look at his painting, he's got lots of little marks. Okay, now you're saying to me, well that's going to take forever, isn't it? It is, yeah. So I've got a bigger brush and I'm not doing lots of little marks. So although I'm painting uh, Cezanne, I'm not doing exactly what Cezanne did. Okay, so we're looking at the shapes because it, we've not got time. But you can do lots of little lines if you want to, yeah. Uh, but I'm just picking up on some of these tones he's got within the objects uh, on the table, yeah. Uh, and as it goes into the shape of the back. So a lot of the time we can't get exactly the same things that he got because because he used oil paint, it blends quite a bit. So if you look at the sienna now and the yellow, we've got this really nice. Uh, and the warm tones coming on the table cloth or whatever it is you can see at the back of the apple there so that's going warmer i've not put any white with that i've just left it as a warm tone uh, that's where my tape's going to be if you add white to that it becomes more opaque you know painting technique so but it actually you can see brings out the background like that and um, we've got similar things in other areas, so if you want to use that tone. Uh, we've got a lovely one here actually, which is in front of, uh, that's going like that, isn't it? it's coming off the picture. Uh, I'll block that in. <coughs> I'm going to block some darks in as well. So yeah, I was said I was carrying on with the, um, the small areas. If you look at the grapes, the green, uh, there's not a lot of things he's done to kind of make them look gra grapeish, yeah. Uh, they just had a green and then he's gone darker green so some of these are like bigger blobs you can see like that. Uh, and then he's painted around them so uh, use a small brush uh, just some when you slap it on like that you just get these curved bits of green uh, you can add touches of yellow to some of it and a bit of white just to give you that warmer 
uh, can of green. We've got one here. Um, not got one here. I've got one here, one there, one everywhere. Some green on the edge of that. Uh, some green here as well. Uh, and then it's quite dark again in the middle. So green, like green and red, like we said before, is a very, very strong dark. So you can paint around the objects. And some of the grapes are very dark against some of the other grapes. You can see. Just leaving the edge of the bowl, because that's where we're going to paint the lovely white area later. And that comes up from that edge, you can see. So we've got just a few of these um, grapes showing. I'm going to use the same colours again for my oranges. So this one's a bit more of a kind of sienna. Uh, sienna and yellow, this one. So it's kind of quick, thick paint. Yeah. Pick up some yellow with it. Uh, you've actually got some yellow in the background, which is reflecting on the um, on the side of uh, this bowl. Can you see there? So you got this lovely. You know, so sometimes, uh, a lot of the time when they were painting, it, it wasn't actually the colour that they were bothered about. It was more about the colour value of an area. So you could use any colour, really. He's got yellows up here, you can see. Uh, it's a pattern in the tablecloth, got some yellow here as well. Uh, so I'm working around the object. Then keep this red. Uh, this disappearing just slightly because it wants to be uh, slightly darker uh, within that uh, area. Okay. I'm going to paint the tablecloth around it later. So we've got a bit of green there, and some white, and some black. So yeah, blue. Blue green, you were green, that you were green, blue we green, that's the edge of the, you can blend that with your finger or a fan brush or whatever brush you've got. I like using my finger. You get your uh, fingerprints. They can always say, it wasn't Suzanne, it was Tony Barry who paid to this, anyway. No, so they can always tell you who's done it. That big area there, big brush, big area, big brush. He wouldn't have done this, he probably used the same brush all the way through. Okay. So I, I've got this really nice shape, which is sort of like that, which is the stand, yeah, which is going into the background. It's quite dark at the back. Uh, you can see some of the colours through that. That's going down to the napkin. And it's thick paint, so it's opaque, so it covers up, yeah. Keep it thick paint, angular, angular myrtle, like that. That way and that way, yeah. Leave some of it showing, doesn't matter. Bit. We'll use some of this as well for add a bit of blue to it. For this um, front bit, which is coming to where the folds are here, so you've got these lovely folds, and then we've got a, a kind of shape like this, which comes down here and goes that way. Uh, that's going off. Uh, some of that. Yeah, that should be the napkin, actually. You know. And then we've got um, this bit, quite a dark window to be taped. For people who are thinking, why have I not gone into the bottom? I've made the picture smaller, yeah, by taping it on. And then, um, you know, it looks like he's dragged it down there to get some of these shapes in the paint. But um, it looks, also looks like he's done it in shorter strokes with, with smaller brushes. So, um, probably using the same colour, but, you know, did it with a small brush and worked quite quick, actually. So that's going around the uh, around the knife head fork, yeah. Uh, so that comes down here like that, and go around the knife. Keep it on the picture; don't want it going off. Like that. Uh, and we can add some sienna later if you want to. Uh, so this is quite a nice colour for drawing darks with, yeah. Uh, it's just going off the picture there; doesn't really matter. And keep that lovely and dark as well. Okay, now I'm going to stand back. Just have a see how many's watching. <laughs> so we're going to uh, start using some uh, background white with our uh, colours. Yeah, and if you look at the napkin, we've got um, we've got yellow in there, we've got cerulean in there, we've got uh, some blue in there, ultramarine. You know, so it's like bits. So if we start in the background here with the, this big. Oh no, I'm not. Sorry, I'm losing the head, aren't I? I haven't done me um I haven't done these uh these orange, I haven't finished them off. So I've got this one which is see anyway, in red. 
So uh, I was doing them, then I got uh, waylaid. Uh, it's yellow and red, and then bigger bush really. More yellow, keep them, keep it kind of clean if possible. So you got a yellowy colour there uh, with a bit of orange. Kind of orange, yeah, I'll see anyway. Yeah. And then we're going uh, a little bit lighter towards the bottom so we can add a little bit of water, uh, yellow, white with it uh, and sienna. So and we're getting this kind of shadow shape around the grape. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, do the same thing here. I mean, I've, I have drawn in purples, which is quite nice because it's uh, it gives you the uh, that lovely complementary colour in the background, so around uh, you know around the fruit and stuff. But if you do add a touch of white, not a lot of white, you should be building up to uh, uh, pure white. Everything else is kind of in between, okay? So if you do want it to be opaque, a bit more opaque out here, you just don't add as much white. Hock it out. Thank you. Um, again, a bit more green. Because we can see through this bit, so I'm going to cover that up with a bit of green. No, we're going to add some yellow to that. Because we've got a bit of yellow here. Yeah. If you take it to um, Sotheby's, you want it exactly like the picture. Else they won't believe it's, yeah, it is. Yeah. When is your game? We don't do things like that, do we? No. Well, that's the centre of your lemon. That's the negative space. This is the shape here, and the napkin folded. Uh, this a uh, uh, lovely angle there, that's so it comes that way, and goes that way, and then it comes down here, and that goes that way, and then this comes off the picture. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use a small brush just to get me going with uh, some of the shapes in this uh, bowl. All right, so because he's used cerulean, I've got cerulean blue. And I'm going to go around the back of the bowl and paint around some of the uh, fruit in there with a bit of white and cerulean blue. Okay, it's going lighter over there. So it's starting more white. And um, we get to the top of the bowl there, it's very light, you can see. Uh -huh. And then we've also got a couple of reflections here, which is in the bowl. Uh, the other side, we've got a shadow and then we've got the whiteness. To make it go a little bit bigger like that, so. uh -huh. and a bit more cerulean. This is a lovely green reflection, and the white from the bowl, which is cerulean blue, and then it goes a uh, kind of uh, a little bit kind of highlight uh, on the rim. Yeah, uh, we'll look at the other side. Uh, make it a little bit bigger because it wants to go in that direction a bit more. But it's more greeny, greeny blue. Bluey green, bluey green, bluey green. Which is coming down here like that. Which goes into the background anyway, doesn't it? So we get these lovely shapes, can you see? So if you look at his bush strokes, we've got this kind of thing happening. Yeah. So I've, I've done some big, big flat strokes. But if you want to add some of his strokes now, because he'd be darker near the bowl, can you see? And then as it comes down, you can see the colour underneath, so he's got this shadow in the background. And then he's going a kind of cooler green over here. Yeah. So that's the way he kind of painted. Uh, it's got a nice effect everywhere because you're getting this uh, linear thing going on. Um, just underneath here, uh, while we're at it, we've got this lovely kind of blue, which is again, it's going in this kind of direction. Because it wasn't dry, he's got green in there, you see, so because he was using oil, it picked up the green and it's made that area a little bit green. So, yeah, it doesn't have to be a particular colour. And then we look at the front of the bowl, which is kind of ultramarine, that one. So we got a bit of ultramarine, get some white. Uh, try and keep your colours you know, kind of clean if possible. So here we're going bit more ultramarine uh, in that area. Uh, we've got some yellow as well. Can you see where the yellow is? And then we're going white. Uh, as you get down here, it's going blue again. Yeah, so you've got these lovely marks. Keep your brush clean. Pick up some yellow. Bit of um, 
because of the yellow here, can you see? A, a bit there. Um, and then we're going whiter because it's got uh, it's got more white in there. So you're coming all the way along here. Like that. Around the front of the ball. And then we're going blue again. <laughs> blue and green uh, around that object. And then we've got some greeny blue. You know, all these like kind of things. He's probably got them all his part of Chevelle. That's a bit of greeny blue. Uh, we'll go over this side, it goes green and then it goes blue again. You know, things like that. You can pick pure pigment up if you want and just go in and mix it on the palette, mix it on the canvas or the picture. But yeah, you get these the lovely marks. You can see, to give you his kind of style. And then in the centre, we've got more white here, so it's kind of you see? Uh, going over the yellow as well. And then we've got blue underneath. So uh, yeah, we got things happening, making the shape of that boat. Okay. Yeah, quite like that. So yeah, you if you carry on painting in this style, these shirt uh, shapes, yeah. Uh, the napkin there has got a yellow streak and it's got a streak there. Uh, it's got some yellow here as well, so it's got a big a bit of yellow here. You know, and then we'll add the white later. Uh, the side here, and then the fold. You know, it's all done the same way. How we do it for town? Bags of town. Let me just have a drink. <clears throat> so a bit of bluey green. Uh, we can use ultramarine as well to give us that kind of darker. Because if you look at the background here, it's, it's dark. Yeah? Uh, we'll go around that, we can go in that direction as well. So I've started using his, his, his way of applying the brush now uh, for the background. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got this, and it's, got, it's quite green, quite a greeny blue at the top here because it just disappears in that really funny rim of the glass uh, it's quite a dark there so a bit of red and blue again because that's the, the rim of the glass you see uh. right um, so that's the back uh, I've got a nice kind of line here as well it's more green underneath you can see that you got these marks of green in the glass, it's reflecting kind of everything around it. Yeah. So we've got this um, uh, slightly lighter there, and as you get down to the rim, it's going a little bit lighter as well. Like that. So you're getting the curve, curvature of the gloss. Like that. Okay, and then we're using some cerulean blue. You can mix a bit of ultramarine with it, you get a lovely kind of cobalt, if you do this, can you see? You get a nice cobalt kind of blue, uh, which isn't it hard to use cobalt, I don't know. And then again, I'm doing his way of doing those marks, mark, mark. We've also got this, and a bit of white to it. Uh, we've also got these uh, shapes here, like this, so you've got the, you see the blue on the, on the tablecloth and um, we've got some green and blue there and the edge of this one so whatever colour is seeing reflected in the tablecloth is just putting in using these um, these lovely darts so you put that and then like that underneath here down where the apple sits on the table some more marks some blue uh, if that comes off the edge there. <coughs> Black lines. Uh, I do like his work when he, when he has this lovely dark kind of line uh, inside that gives you, uh, it's like a stained glass window, which is really effective actually. So, yeah. Sometimes we, we used to do still lines, just picking the objects and then not just painting what you see, but 
position them in a kind of, we'll do that actually, I'll do it one day. We'll position them in a kind of shape uh, that makes a pleasing. I'll see if I can find some other pictures. I'll do it, I'll do it next week. <coughs> I'll do it next week when I come back. I come back. So the tip of the knife's quite dark, can see? And then um, it goes a different colour. And then it goes dark again there. So start it up. And you get the edge. Now that bit you get on the, the rim of the handle. Things like that. Yeah. We can use more red. Because here it's because of, I think I think I uh, so the apple effect is slightly lighter there and then darker here. So red and green, so we see. So where you get the the centre here, you get these little lines. Can you see these little lines? So you're getting the dark bit in the middle and then you're getting the the light bit towards the end. So this is picking up the shadow underneath has actually got a bit of a line there, you can see it. Going around that object. Uh, inside here as well, that's dark. Uh, this linear thing. Block big areas in. Red sienna, yellow, white. Mix it together. What do you got? What do you got? So this is this shape, which I actually put in the wrong place. But you can see how he kind of breaks it up. So he's, he's still going in that kind of direction, which is really nice, actually. And then here we've got this kind of thing. So here we've got yellow, and then we've got a bit of sienna showing. And because it's got white in, it's opaque, so it covers up things, can you see? Beautiful, it looks nice on your wall, this, actually, yeah. Um, please don't try and sell it to anybody, as an original. Uh, don't want the police come knocking up my door. Uh, but, but sienna and blue make a burnt umber, it also makes a grey, so you've got these lovely dark kind of grey tones. Yeah. This, this is all going to be white anyway, so they've got this nice warmth. I've um, got the warmth there around this again because that goes off the picture. In that area, like that. Yep. A um, bit of blue come around here. Opaque paint now, so it's um, more white mixed with uh, the colours. And we get these really nice colours, so we're getting these lovely colours of uh, around. So it's the light catching the blue of the napkin and then we've got these little lines again. So I might change to a little brush. I just want to do me, um, yeah, change my brush. Just want to do the, this vase. So as we're coming down here, it's more white, you can see. So it's thick paint, thick paint. Uh, this comes around the apple uh, and then yeah, because he's getting these lines again. Can you see the liney thing? And as you're coming down, you're going a bit bluer, bluer, bluer. Yeah. Uh, and there goes a bit darker here, and then a bit lighter. You've got some yellow in there. So he's actually doing the tones and then mixing it up with other colours he's got in his palette. Uh, as long as it's the same tonal value, it's uh, it gives you the lovely light catching the napkin. Which is what we're after. Yeah. Uh, same here. Again, that really nice kind of. I might get a small brush. So where I did my line, <coughs> get carried away now. I didn't want to get carried away with this one. I'm going to do it quick. But where you see this apple, can you see how dark that edges? And it's beautiful. It just brings out that green, and that goes into the background. So. It's kind of, like I said, stained glass window happening, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, take a little brush again, start picking up some colour. White. It's actually mixing with another colour of that. So I've got a pure white thing though, it just brings out that shape like that. Uh, it goes that way and it comes down here. Like that. And then it goes uh, up there. And this goes uh, on the top, that one. So we've got, we've got this line down, down the back. Uh, we have got you know, mixed up yellow in there, sienna, things like that. 
And so that's quite nice. And then along the front, yeah. And the blue against the green and things like that. Because it's opaque paint, you can move things, yeah. <coughs> you can put things somewhere else. So I'm just gonna strengthen this edge of the napkin, doing me in that direction of strip things, yeah. And I say me a, a bit of white. All right. <laughs> then we're going over here. Uh, we've got green, bluey green, hue green, yeah, turquoise colours. Really nice inside there actually, and that shadow. Uh, same here, and that shadow. <clears throat> and then the shapes are going this way with the turquoise and the yellow, uh, green, yellowy green. Yeah, love it. Yeah, it does that well. The only difference is uh, oil paint is a lot more, it's a lot stronger contrast wise, but it'll be a lot lighter than uh, what we're getting on here. Okay, so you get the general idea of the acrylics. You can act, you can always uh, put a stronger colour on the whites when it dries because the dry, the whites go flat and they kind of sink into the paper. Or the canvas, I can see, and this beer. So, yeah, we got this. Just want to bring out that edge. So, the more paint you put on, and the thicker it goes, the more strength and contrast you get. It's like this bit now, you can see. The knife won't show me. I've just got the edge of the knife here on the other side of the width. Now I've got some yellow, nice white bit there. There's the napkin again, which curves that way. A bit more yellow. Put some yellow on red sienna on this uh, knife as well. Oops, I've got my bush. I'm <laughs> still online. Everything's quiet. Uh, colours. What colour? Beautiful. Uh, more yellow, sienna, and white and things, just to bring out the warmth. You can see the warmth there on that. Uh, Napkin and the warmth here. Yeah. Like I said, it's gone, gone a bit dull because they just had a bit more white, and that brings out the contrast, the, the stronger tone. All right. Um, yeah, we've got this shape here as well. We can go darker in the background. It looks like the background took quite a while to do it actually, as it was building up this tone of light. Yeah, um, it's got some shapes here. Yeah, which is going into the side of the bar, so you can take this a bit higher actually. So it gives you that lovely shape. Then the object, you said you can add blue here, yeah, like I said, because it's in the background, it's giving this uh, light on the table. You know, if anybody's keeping up, Brian, keeping up, Brian, he's doing really well actually, keeping up. Um, you don't have to keep up. Here we've got mainly green, 
Well, I'm a bit scared to do it. So this is garlic. Oops, keep touching blue. Uh, here we've got this lovely kind of dark edge to the bowl. What we find are using paint up. Yeah, I would buy some more. I mean, I've not been working properly for months now. But we will survive. Beans on toast. I'd like to have beans on toast, maybe. Green. White. So we're going a little bit whiter, uh, lighter here with the green. So we've got this directional. Using the end of the brush. Like that. <laughs> Squint. Take the glasses off. Look at the shapes. Yeah. Like that. Stand back. <coughs> Again, this is a very linear way of sketching, which is the shapes or anything like that. So the, uh, I, I kind of leave the shape and then, then he adds the background for that. Yeah? Where well, you can see through it. <coughs> Got the same thing happening there. That's a bit more blue actually. You got this kind of blue shape, leaf shapes, a uh, bit yellow, uh, this blue shape is there in here, Got that in white. Oh, yes. So we got the light, the light on the leaf, uh, background blues, like that. A bit yellow with dark. It's going warmer here. Blues, blue, blue, blue. Keep it opaque. Opaque. So this is coming down to the top of the vase. A little bit lighter, like that. Then do your directional strokes. Something like that. And then the light in the vase again. Uh, not the vase. A glass of wine, which we're going to have later. I get that. <laughs> More white, kind of especially here. Can you see the thickness in there? It's beautiful. Uh, the edge of this napkin. Because I want that to come forward, don't I? So to make it come forward, we add uh, warm colours to it as well. So we've got this lovely yellowish colour. Sienna. White. Sienna coming down here. If there's anything that's kind of slightly disappeared because of the drying time, we pick it up again. Now, like I say, once you uh, once you start to paint around the object, and you see where you know you're getting reflected lights out as well, and they go a bit dull then, so you're getting this. Flex of colour and we add white to it just to be, make it opaque. We can do that with, with the object in there. <coughs> uh, but, um, what was I doing then? You know, sometimes you get all sorry. Uh, and this <coughs> bit more white. I'm going to make Okay, so this is stronger. It's kind of vibrating off the paper, I think. Beautiful sunshine today. Got the green in there as well. 
need to throw a bit more green over here. And a bit of Very light edge. Uh -huh. <coughs> and a little bit of yellow there. Edge of the bowl. All the way down there. Put some yellow in there. <coughs> Light. I was thinking, you're probably thinking these grapes need a bit of a uh, little highlight. Well, he hasn't got any actually, but not many anyway. You can put little things like that in. Take them off. So you get little highlighted grapes. Um, negative space. Just to iron some of the grapes. Uh, put them back. And that lovely line there. That was it. Quality. Speed painting at its fastest. Come back. It is warm in here though. Very, very warm. I'm just going to add a bit more green on this one. Again, lots of these little marks. And the lemon. A bit of red. So you can do a lot of glazing with the acrylics as well. So you get a nice dark. You glaze with oils. So you're glazing all the things to make it uh, slightly dark. Glazing. People keep saying, what does glazing mean? That's what glazing is. Uh, <laughs> ah, here's a smaller brush, I'll tell you that. <laughs> right, and then the, uh, this bit coming around. Just a little lighter, uh, and it goes that way again. Pure white, right in there, so it's very strong in there. That comes down here, and then we get a bit on the edge, and a bit on this. Well, yeah, so you are, you just, I mean, we haven't got the objects in front of us. But we've got an idea of what he, he was actually looking at, which is good. This is one of the reasons I like doing this kind of painting in the style of giving you know, their techniques, the way they did things, the way they solved the problems with the anime. Uh, when it dries, it's, it's gonna. I'm gonna bring those colours out with varnish. Don't forget. Again, I'm gonna put the red and green. Paint some of the nice dark shapes. Of 
Yeah. Put the motorized clear in. Uh, probably won't go in that way. Right, there's a M6. That's the traffic again. Why is it Bremer going in there? and a small bush for the white and the rim just about it yeah. nearly Nearly ready, Liam. Paint. See, there he's got this continuous blue line up there. It's goes into the table. And here he's got this green line. It's cut down into the table, so it's like. Oops. It was a bit white now. Very loose style. Love it. You know, eh? Love the impressionists. Love this guy. What's his name? Suzanne. <sighs> um, what's his face? I'll get rid of my underpainting a little bit there. I'll take the tape off. Okay, I'm going to stop because it's 10 to. And I started at 10 to, I'm sorry. Right, uh, it's nearly 10 to. Put some light around my apple and the stalkies. I've run out of yellow, but I'm not doing any more. So. so you can carry on from that if you wanted to. Yeah, you can make it a little bit, uh, add more colour. I can just leave it. And say it's your interpretation of what's his name? Suzanne. Bye bye. Sign it, date it. Think of a number, double it. Sell it as a Cezanne esque. There's what more there, can see. This napkin's very, very light. I'm 
Roger for getting us from the highlight. In between the greens and the blues, that kind of slime folds, shapes, background shape. And that was yellow in there as well. But I've got to yellow, so. Excuse my light up. And there you have it. Didn't we say that? And there you have it. <clears throat> Quite a bit of white. Usually on the edges of things. It's like a fish. <laughs> right, um, had a bit of green, been wasting the paint on that. And stop, because <laughs> I put my paint away. Okay, I'm going to leave it till I come back and look at it. I might, might be dry then and use some, I need some more colour in the top food actually. I'm going to just do it. I'll be a minute. The top food, which is more yellow. Keep your brush clean. So we've got this really nice uh, Highlight in red. We've got this orange, which I don't have any orange. So if you've got orange, use it. I'll just make it up with red and yellow. Because when I was at school, they used to say, How do you make orange? Red and yellow. <coughs> yeah, I've got a bit there. Okay. Stop. Get the tape off. It's different to Yemen, it's dry because it's, uh, like I said, it, the uh, paint sinks. The darks are a bit dull. And when you varnish it, it makes the darks a bit shinier and darker, hence making the whites lighter. It's not completely away, sorry. Put the end there. Okay. There you have it. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, see you Monday. Uh, I'll think about doing still life but anyway i'll not tell you i'll see you monday um with whatever we're doing <laughs> have a nice weekend bye